Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. <laughs> Exalt thy people from their offenses, that through thy bountiful goodness we may all be delivered from the bands of those sins which by our frailty we have committed. Grant this, O Heavenly Father, for the sake of Jesus Christ, our blessed Lord and Savior. Amen. Here we get at the 13th verse of the third chapter of Malachi. Your words have been stout against me, saith the Lord, 
Yet ye say, What have we spoken so much against thee? Ye have said, It is vain to serve the Lord. And what profit is it, is it that we have kept his ordinance, and that we have walked mournfully before the Lord of hosts? And now we call the proud happy. Yea, that, that work wickedness are set up. Yea, they that tempt God are even delivered. Then they that feared the Lord spake often one to another, and the Lord hearkened and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord, and that thought upon his name. And they shall be mine, said the Lord of hosts, and in that day when I make up my jewels. And I will spare them as a man spareth his own son that serveth him. Then shall ye return and discern between the righteous and the wicked, between him that serveth God and him that serveth him not. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly, shall be stubble, and the day shall come cometh, and the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. But unto you, you that fear my name, shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings, and ye shall go forth and grow up with calves in the stall, and ye shall tread down the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet in the day that I shall do this, saith the Lord of hosts. Here endeth the lesson. The epistle is written in the first chapter of Colossians, beginning at the third verse. We give thanks to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you, since we heard of your faith in Jesus, in Christ Jesus, and of the love which ye have, have for all the saints, for the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, whereof ye heard before the word of the truth of the gospel, which is come unto you as it is in the, all the world, and bringeth forth fruit, as it doth also in you since the day ye heard of it, and knew the grace of God and truth as ye also learned of Epaphras, our dear fellow servant, who is for you a faithful minister of Christ, who also declared unto us your love in the Spirit. For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you, and to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might, according to his glorious power, unto all patience and all suffering with joyfulness, giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Here endeth the epistle. Thanks be to God. spoke these things unto John's disciples, behold, there came a certain ruler and worshipped him, saying, My daughter is even now dead, but come and lay thy hand upon her, and she shall live. And Jesus arose and followed him, and so did his disciples. And behold, a woman, which was diseased with an issue of blood twelve years, came behind him, and touched the hem of his garment. For she said within herself, If I may but touch his garment, I shall be whole. But Jesus turned about him, <clears throat> turned him about, and when he saw her, he said, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith has made thee whole. 
And the woman was made whole from that hour. And when Jesus came into the ruler's house and saw the minstrels and the people making a noise, he said unto them, Give place, for the maid is not dead, but sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn. When the people were put forth, he went in and took her by the hand, and the maid arose. And the fame thereof went abroad unto all the land. Praise, Praise be to thee, thee O Christ. Christ. everybody and I want to welcome our guests uh, also those uh, returning and uh, those visiting from out of town and I, I'm going to put uh, one individual in the spot Kathy it's great to have you here visiting from Indiana we miss you yeah so I it's a real blessing treat to have you I hope you have a blessed Thanksgiving with Joel and the rest of your family so welcome yeah. um, also, I want to uh, let you know, uh, anything going on around here at the church today? Like anything on? Yeah. There's a lot of baked goods out on the patio. And uh, so I hope you'll uh, purchase those, uh, whether it be a cake, pie, cookies, whatever, to you know be at the dinner table this Thursday for Thanksgiving or whenever day, whatever day you're going to have it if you're going to celebrate uh, Thanksgiving Day. Um, but uh, those monies, donations you give uh, toward the baked goods will help our ACW um, charities which they give, uh, we, typically around Christmas, they give most of the money out to charities in the community and within the parish too. So please support that cause. And uh, then he gets a nice treat as well. And um, also I want to uh, let you know that uh, our, our very own uh, parishioner, Martha Tracy, has worked very hard at putting the, uh, Martha, thank you, do a fabulous job every year, the Advent table in the back. So there are a lot of good things you can purchase for the season of Advent uh, to enrich your devotional uh, life as you prepare, as we welcome Jesus anew into our hearts uh, this Christmas. So there are Advent calendars, there are devotional books, there are the Advent wreath. And with the Advent wreath, which is uh, something that uh, is part of our, our tradition, you have this little printout here which tells you how to 
uh, pray those prayers and read the scriptures around the Advent wreath. You can have it typically right before you eat dinner. And uh, now if you have pets, they may not be as patient with you or children. But, you know, it's a great way to uh, invite and encourage uh, the habit of prayer, especially with your family around the dinner table. So it's in scripture reading. So this is all laid out here. And I hope you'll get an Advent wreath and candles as well. Uh, thank you, Martha, for doing that. And then uh, we have uh, Christmas rehearsals are going to be starting soon on the 27th. So we are getting some kids together. We have uh, some homeschool kids coming. We have uh, others within our parish, friends of the parish. So it should be another uh, wonderful pageant, we hope, God willing. Um, Elves of Sheep will gather them, and they won't go astray, at least for 10 minutes, I hope. But it uh, should be a great thing. And then also the Nine Lessons and Carols will be coming up on the 17th. And so um, that's going to be a great event as well. So choir, you're doing a fabulous job. I've been listening to the rehearsals here. You practice the for the nine lessons, sounding really fabulous. So that should be wonderful. And uh, so we look forward to that. So a lot of great things going on. Um, and then too, I want to like, let you know I will be out of town. I start tomorrow for a trip to Texas uh, to visit my parents, uh, both of whom are not doing well uh, health wise. So if you please keep them in prayer, it'd be uh, greatly appreciated. Um, all of my family will be there. It's the first time in many years when we all gather there at my, my parents' home. So we're excited about that. So, so pray for Luke and myself as we travel um, back uh, to Texas tomorrow. Bob, and, I have an announcement. Yes. Uh, we have a sign-up sheet in the back of the church for our Christmas ugly sweater Christmas contest okay. with an address and phone number and Everyone in church would be welcome to come. Okay, and that's on a Saturday the 16th. It's a Saturday yeah. the 16th. Okay, and I, I guess I'm the judge of who has the, the ugliest. Well, who's going to argue with you? There were some pretty ugly ones last year. So. <laughs> and uh, okay, it was, it, it was a good time. And that's uh, sweet of you and your uh, daughter to open up your home for that. Uh, it's a fun hey, time. So I hope you can all attend that too. All right, other announcements are here. There will be a Mass on uh, Wednesday at regular time, 11 a.m. then. For Thanksgiving Day, what better place to come to the church at 9.30 a.m. to give thanks to God, who is the source of all our blessings. And so that will be at uh, 9.30. Uh, Father David will cover both uh, Masses on that day. Social ministries on that Wednesday, too? Yes. Okay, good. And all the Chosen. And the Chosen. Fantastic. All right. If you'll please stand. <laughs>
Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. You know, the beauty of this church and being a member of a wider body uh, is the Anglican Church, the Catholic Church, and the Anglican tradition. And so we have this calendar, this church calendar, which really is it's seasonal. It goes through the entire life and ministry of our Lord Jesus. And now we are concluding another season, the green season of Trinity, which represents, the color, color green represents and symbolizes growth. So over these last 24 Sundays uh, in Trinity season, the Gospels have been opened up to us, and we have learned so much about our Lord Jesus in new ways, in new thoughts of thinking of him as Lord and Savior. And as St. Paul says in Colossians, beginning in verse, chapter 1, verse 3, he speaks again of those three theological virtues of faith, hope, and charity. And certainly during these 24 Sundays, we've seen time and time again where our Lord Jesus reveals himself, not only as the second person of the Holy Trinity as God incarnate, but also he reveals the heart of God, which is love, infinite love. And so this morning, what a wonderful account of two miracles that took place. Not only was the healing miraculous, I mean, it was just outstanding and just awesome and mind-blowing, and all those who witnessed it were beside themselves, but there was an even greater message and a greater miracle that occurred uh, for these two souls that encountered our Lord on that day. And it's something we can learn from. You see, uh, faith, hope, and charity, the first of these, faith, uh, this woman who had the issue of blood, who was hemorrhaging, who had internal bleeding, who had put perhaps her faith, or had put her faith in people, places, and things, and doctors, and was searching out, how can I be healed of this malady? I'm gonna take hand, matter into my own hands. But after 12 years, she realized she was powerless over her condition. She realized there was no way she could heal herself or anyone around her could heal her of this infirmity, which was, it was debilitating. It was devouring, it was destroying her. And so we reach, you and I reach in that point of our lives when we have those trials, those afflictions, those things that come upon us which are out of our control and we admit, and the first thing we admit is that we are powerless over these situations. We cannot put our faith in people, places, and things because eventually they will let us down. Now God will work through these things and work through people, but we cannot make them our savior or our ultimate a refuge, our um, place, person, place, the thing we go to for that help. And so the beauty of the Christian faith is, and what Jesus was trying to acknowledge or to have these two souls acknowledge is that they can place their faith in him and he will not disappoint. And he also said, the truth will set you free. You see, when we admit that we are powerless over sin in our lives, when we admit that we are powerless over the circumstances and afflictions that can come upon us, that so much is out of our control, then we can have that peace which passes understanding because we embrace the one and we come to the feet of one who can overcome all things in and through us. Now the circumstances may not change, but our attitude can. And we can have that joy which passes all understanding and that peace which Jesus speaks of. And so, uh, again, that wonderful verse of scripture is from St. John, he says, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So you see, the woman who came to Jesus, she knew she had the physical malady, but then Jesus heals her and introduces her to something much more powerful in the way of a healing. And that he draws out her, she draw, he draws her out to acknowledge this woman's faith in front of everyone, but also to reassure her of God's infinite love for her that the malady she had wasn't caused by sin, it was rather, you know, just something that happened. So she was reassured of God's love for her, the forgiveness of sins for her life, and that despite what she was going through, God was there for her. And so, what a remarkable and miraculous thing, because eventually she would die, right? I mean, she's gonna die, but she had this hope now in Jesus Christ, that he is the author of all life, 
And the wonderful verses, if you read morning prayer this morning, the epistle reading, the New Testament reading, or the Old Testament reading, it's all there. A reminder that our faith, hope, and God's love, those three theological virtues, we can nurture and continue to nurture beyond the Trinity season, and we can take those with us into the next life. There's the one thing we can take with us. And then you have the man who comes, this father who is so, so concerned and worried about his daughter who is at the point of death, and she does die. And so he is grieving, he is, he's beside himself, he knows he can't do anything, but he has faith and hope that possibly this Messiah, this miracle worker can save his daughter and bring her back to life. And so he comes to Jesus, says, help my daughter, please come now. And so he goes and she's, she is deceased and all of them are laughing and scorning those that are you know, gathered to mourn the loss of her. It says there's no way, you know, Jesus can help her now. But Jesus is the author of all life. He is the one who gives life and takes life. And so when he puts her hand upon her, raises her up, she comes up from, from the dead and now is alive again. She has been risen from the dead. She's, been, she's, she's come back to life. And so they, they are just dumbfounded and, and astonished and so joyful and grateful that Jesus has performed this miracle. But again, she eventually will die, her parents will die, but they have now this hope that there is life beyond the grave, one who can conquer all things, conquer death, conquer sin, and conquer all that comes against us. And so that is really the, the, the great message uh, from these gospel uh, miracle accounts. But I also wanna share with you that Jesus Christ, who is alive then, is alive now and working through his body, which we are members of, because think of it, there are two things that he did. Remember, touch was very important. The woman touched the tassels, you know, the prayer shawl of, of, his, uh, of his clothing, right? So she touched him. Also, Jesus touched the hand of the young girl and raised her from the dead. Touch is very important. That is why, you know, we, uh, as, as Christians, we are the body of Christ. And so therefore, we are to go out and be the hands, the feet, the mouth. In other words, we are to touch those who are in need of Jesus Christ, to let, him, let them know that he is the author of all life and that darkness and despair, which may impinge upon one, that in and through him that light can come into them and that joy, which he so wishes to give each soul that walks the earth today. Now, I want to share with you a true story which happened in um, this last week to show you that Jesus is very much alive and well today. Because going from my own past experience, you know, what was that uh, movie? And I haven't seen it for so long. It's called uh, The Bishop's Wife. Is that the one? And didn't the bishop, he wanted to have a big cathedral or something. And, you know, look, I want to build this big monster. And I guess it became an idol for him, right? And this is like, we got to have this. And I remember when I first came here, you know, the church became your rector that, oh, we got to buy that land over there, build a school, build a school, build a school. And it seems like door after door was closed. Said, God, what's up with you? We got to build this. This is good. We need to do that. But see, that was me talking. I wanted to be in control. And God said, no. Or he said, not yet. Or he said, just trust in me. And so it's like me having to, like that woman, after 12 years, or now it's 20 years, Jesus, I surrender, I give up. You know, I'm powerless over all this. It's, I'm going to put it in your hands. And so what have we started doing in the last two years? Nine days of prayer, praying here, adoration, Wednesday Mass, intercessory prayer, 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 prayer read the Bible, do these things, connect with Jesus. And then you're in that state of humility and surrender. You're in charge, God. You do. And then what happens? Miracles begin to happen in a big and profound way. And that happened this yesterday, I guess it was. Yeah, yesterday uh, they're having a training session for the Good News Club, which we want to start a ministry here, teaching the Bible to uh, elementary school students one block over at Eisenberg. The door has been closed there, but now it's opening. Also, we heard of one, uh, one of the uh, instructors for the Good News Club, and this is such an easy thing to put on, an easy thing to, because they offer everything. It's all laid out for uh, the volunteers to teach the Bible, and you get to do all these fun games, you know, reading uh, 
uh, learning Bible verses and stuff. And uh, Valerie, you got to en enjoy that. Yeah, it was fun. But anyway, one of the, the parents uh, came up and he was teaching it. And he said, you know, there was a young girl. Uh, she'd been coming to um, this particular school. They got into the Good News Club. And she had been there three times. So if you go three times, the child gets to have a Bible. is given to them. And so she took the Bible home uh, to her mom and dad. And her mother's been battling cancer. And uh, the dad uh, was just so moved that, uh, you know, this was given to her. But she described the same story, which we just heard about this morning, about the woman with the internal bleeding. And that she told her mom, Jesus healed her. And she had this joy about her. And the father said, you know, even though she's suffering with cancer, my daughter has this joy which can't be taken away. And so he was so impressed by that, he decided to come to the Bible Club the, the next week. And so, so he started to learn about this, and he was so gratified. And then a couple of weeks later, her cancer began to be in remission. So now it's, it's receding from her body. Wouldn't Jesus do that? Of course. I mean, what, how he works is mysterious. Whether he heals her or not is not the issue. They have something much greater, and that is hope in Jesus, that he is the Savior that he is, there is life beyond the grave, that there is hope, there is a joy, which so many sullen great faces, whether they be on the children, faces of young children or adults, they're looking for what we have. And so when we possess that, when we have Jesus, our Lord, we can give that same wonderful thing that which we all deep down desire. Does God love me? Am I loved as I am? Can I get out of this terrible strait I am with my sins and those things that come against me? Can they be overcome? And the answer time and time again is yes, yes, yes. In Christ there is hope. There is our faith. And there is his love. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. <coughs> Let us remember the words of our Lord when he said it is more blessed to give than to receive. <laughs>
Well, this holy sacrifice is offered to the great glory of God. And uh, please pray for all those mentioned in the parish bulletin and prayer list. A special intention this morning for the ongoing conflict in Israel and the Middle East. Also for our, our soldiers and armed forces who are in harm's way. We pray for God's protection. Also for the ongoing conflict in Ukraine and just overall multiple crises around the world. We pray for God's uh, mercy and uh, protection for all, all life. Also, I ask your prayers for all those traveling uh, this Thanksgiving Day uh, week and weekend, uh, that uh, God will grant safe travel with uh, His holy angels watching over and protecting people coming and going, uh, and especially for um, Kathy and also for uh, myself and my son Luke as we travel to Texas. Uh, please pray for my parents, uh, Mary and William, in poor health. Also, Jack Bates, who's in the hospital at this time in intensive care. Also, uh, we pray for Helen Grimaldi, recovering from hip surgery, who's in rehab at Silver Hills. Also, we pray for uh, the repose of the soul of Mary Macero, uh, Daniel's uh, wife, who's deceased a week and a half ago. Please pray for Daniel as he grieves uh, the loss of his wife of over 50 years. We pray for all those who are sick, the hungry, the lonely, those who are spending Thanksgiving alone or have lost of a loved one recently. Pray for God's comfort and consolation. And uh, finally, we pray for our Good News uh, Club that uh, volunteers will continue to come forward to serve this wonderful ministry and place it upon their hearts to do so, that we might impart the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ, uh, to these young generations coming up. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ Church. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our alms and oblations, and to receive these our prayers, which we offer on to thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also so to direct and dispose the hearts of all Christian rulers that they may truly and impartially administer justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers especially our Archbishop Blair, Bishops Donald and Peter, Father David, Deacon Marty, and myself, and other ministers, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who, in this transitory life, are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to give us grace so to follow their good examples, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Ye who do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins, enter in love and charity with your neighbors, and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God, walking from henceforth in his holy ways. Draw near with faith, and take this holy sacrament to your comfort, and make your humble confession to Almighty God, devoutly kneeling. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness. 
which we from time to time most grievously have committed, by thought, word, and deed, against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us, we do earnestly repent, and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings, the remembrance of them is grievous unto us, the burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all of this past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who in hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bound in duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, <clears throat> who made there, by his one oblation of himself once offered, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and it institute, and in his holy gospel, command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this. 
For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, we thy humble servants do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we, receiving them, according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood, of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us, and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Peace of the Lord be always with you.
to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him that taketh away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come into my roof, but see the word only, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come into my roof, but see the word only, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come into my roof, but see the word only, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank Thee for that Thou hast vouchsafed to feed us, who have duly received these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of Thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And just assure us thereby Thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members in corporate in the mystical body of Thy Son, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom, by the merits of his most precious death and passion. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. <coughs> the Lord be with you. Depart in peace. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Thank you. 